110 years is a long time in the history of a city and its people. A lot has changed over those years, but one thing remains the same. A local organisation set up to provide help for people and communities in Carlisle. This is its story. Okay, David, to start, can you tell us your name? Give us a sentence about Cumbria CVS. Yep, no problem. Okay, we'll start with the interview, and I need to get some GVs in the area. We'll try and keep it in focus this time. Uh, great, when you're ready, David. Hello, my name's David Richardson, Chair of Cumbria CVS. We offer help, advice, training, and support to third sector groups across Cumbria. That's good, David. Can you, can you give us more snappy soundbite about the CVS? Make it clear for the audience. Cumbria CVS. We're the people who help the people who help Cumbria. Hey, we're trying to do an interview here. Sorry. It wasn't always known as Cumbria Council for Voluntary Service. In this city, it was originally known as Carlisle Charity Organisation Society, and its foundation in 1904 was a hugely significant event. For the many people in Carlisle suffering from hardship and living in poverty, it provided some respite, and for the first time, these people were no longer alone. Even then, a single ticket could bring hope. And even the possibility of a new life. It must be remembered that this was a time before the welfare state and the loss of your job could mean starvation for you and your family. If you're going to win it, you've got to get a ticket. What's all this then? Sit down, Mr Tully. No need to be alarmed. We've come to help. Help? What help can you offer me? Not unless there is a job I can have. Help. And listen to what Reverence has to say. We have looked into your situation with great care and believe your family cannot be maintained in Carlisle. Therefore, we have arranged passage for you and your family to Canada. We believe this is the best course of action in your situation. The aim of the charity was the cure, not merely the relief of distress. It wanted to make a change in people's lives that would last and give them the opportunity to improve their own situation. Thank you, sir. You sailed in three days. Safe passage. Although some people managed to escape to more prosperous lands, not all were so lucky. Outbreaks of typhus and cholera were rife. Mortality rates, especially among children, were horrifyingly high. Get that winning ticket, that paper in my hand do the things I dreamed and find my promise land. From the last chance saloon and my falling down Got a chance now to change, to turn things around Got to turn things around, I can turn Great change and upheaval was just around the corner. In 1914, national tensions exploded into the mechanised bloody conflict of the First World War, claiming millions of lives. When it ended in 1918, there was some optimism for a new future. And into this new world, the Carlisle Charitable Organisation Society became the new Carlisle Council of Social Service. For it is social service that people need now, as we slip out of one global conflict towards a world uncertain about its future. What is social service? 
or what is generally known as social service, has appeared in the past as the efforts of the well-to-do to improve the conditions of those living in the worst circumstances. I'm on like us, eh? It is now hoped that in the future it will be rather the common effort on the part of all citizens to improve social conditions in their locality. Um, I'll burn down my slum and build a mansion. This will of course require the efforts of all agencies, both voluntary and official, in cooperation. Oh well, good luck to you sir. In presenting its annual report for 1922, the Council acknowledged the support of its subscribers and associated societies in enabling it to carry out its work through difficult circumstances. Unemployment had placed considerable demands upon the Council. Cases were dealt with on the principle of maintaining the self-respect of applicants, but these were difficult times. Industrial troubles and development of new housing areas in the city has brought to the notice of the citizens very forcibly the need for community centres. Where the residents of the new areas can find opportunities for recreation and further education in the widest sense of the word. The Physical Training and Recreation Act of 1937 adds greatly to the powers of authorities in this direction and voluntary organisations like our own are doing their best to cooperate and forward the movement. And so we now move forward to Curragh, where one of the first community centres in the country was being established. decided to give us a go then, Ernest? Aye, uh, well it gives me something to do till I leave. You be called up too then? Same as us, including me. That'll be the end of this place then. You won't be able to run things without you. Don't be daft. Sent us more than one man. It's about community. It would be doomed to failure if it didn't class itself as family. Ah, this place will be long about after I'm dead and buried. Go on, get in there then, Ernest. Let's we'll see what you can do. Jack! Jack, let him in. Jack! In 1933, the charity had saved Curragh House from demolition, and in 1934, it became a community centre. Although community centres are commonplace now, in 1934, this was a trailblazing project that brought the whole community together. But while the charity was improving the lives of Carlisle citizens, storm clouds had gathered over Europe. Adolf Hitler's appalling Nazi regime had come to power in Germany and slowly but surely the nations of Europe edged towards another bloody confrontation from which many of Carlisle's citizens would never return. Well, there's streets in there for your arms. From moving around the ring, it watches you quite hard. You'll have to cover your face. Close up, that's it. Close up, that's it, yeah. Hey lad, and you'll be dead too if you don't keep your head down! Can anyone see him? Can't see! Can't see! To the right! To the right! We need to fall back! If you move! The war took its toll on the citizens of Carlisle. Many fathers, husbands and sons would never return.
Okay, girls, I'm sorry I'm late. Been out in the fields and all warm. In 1939, a Citizens Advice Bureau was set up in Carlisle by the Council for Social Service. Though it is now a respected institution, it's interesting to think that it originally arose out of necessity in time of war. Initially, it provided help assisting people in the search for relatives and providing invaluable support for the families of servicemen who often struggled financially to make ends meet. Where the girls of Kurik House, Kurik House, Kurik House, where the girls of Kurik House, here to entertain you. C U R R O C K, O C K, O C K, C U R R O C K, C U at our centre. I haven't heard from Thomas for six months now. He usually writes. They said they don't need me at the factory anymore. I said, how am I supposed to put food on the table with Thomas away and me with no job? My baby. My poor baby. The Ministry of Education is publishing a pamphlet about community centres. This means that all the work that the community association is doing can publicly recognised. It marks the beginning of... Along with the rest of Britain, at Currock House, 1945 would be remembered as the year of victory, victory parties and the return of men from the front. What's fresh in post-war Carlisle? Well, now, there's a feeling at present in many people's minds that the need for voluntary organisations for social services has come to an end. What with recent legislation and the welfare state, which seems to cater for all the problems and financial difficulties arising, the question arises, is there a need for charity anymore? Lord Pakenham certainly thinks there's still a role for charity. In a recent House of Lords debate on behalf of the Labour government, he said... We are convinced that the voluntary organisations we have rendered are rendering and must be encouraged to continue to render great and indispensable services to the community, whatever that means. So what do you think? 
Have your say. Get in touch with us on Radio Carlisle. Send in your thoughts by letter or carrier pigeon. Hello, Mary. What's going on here, then? Oh, hi, John. Back from uni. It's uh, going to be a tourist info centre and citizens' advice bureau. I'm going to volunteer. Fancy it? Join Volunteer Action Carlisle and help the people. All for a good cause, and if it means working with you, then yeah. With few paid staff and a band of volunteers, Carlisle's Tourist Information Centre was run for the next 25 years by the organisation, now known as Voluntary Action Carlisle. Hello? Yes, um, over 25,000 people access our services here each year. Not just to get advice about places to visit in and around the Cumbria area, but also for advice from our citizens' advice staff and volunteers. Yes, last year we even found the time to give out donated television sets to the needy and housebound across the city. Okay, thank you so much, that's brilliant. Bye now. It was so nice. The Old Town Hall itself provided a meeting space for a variety of community groups and associations, events and meetings, and you could even pick up a bargain at the city's first charity shop. Hi, I was wondering if you had any information on the thrift shop? Yes, absolutely. It Thank is you. on the second of each month in that That's location, uh, and if you have anything that you want to give us, we take clothes, books, small household items, things like that. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Now a membership organisation, the CVS in Carlisle was one of the first in the country to accept into its ranks a group for gay men and women. In the early 1970s, the campaign for homosexual equality was a strong but apprehensive band of people coming out and attempting to integrate into a suspicious wider society. What time is the group meeting today? Mm -hmm. I'm uh, here for the meeting. Mm -hmm. The homo meeting. Sorry, I didn't catch it. The homosexual meeting where the pubs come in and they talk about changing people's opinions. Fine, you're okay here. Don't worry, we know what you've been through. It's an extra along. Thanks. Isn't it great that we can do something like this? Such a great service. Yes, well, I suppose it's more radical than handing out flyers or organising trips to Silleth, which is our bread and butter. To think four years ago a group like that would have been illegal. It has to be remembered that this was only a few years after the Sexual Offences Act of 1967, before which homosexuality was effectively illegal, and there were other needs to be met. Well, this is exciting. That's nine families of Vietnamese boat people settled in the city. Well, what's next then? Tackling unemployment. Shake off your diamonds and your fur. Tear off your rubies and your pearls Beneath it all you're just a girl And in your nakedness We'll see through your fancy dresses, fancy dresses Shake off your diamonds and your furs Rip off the blindfold from your eyes You might then see through all the lies how wealth has made you shameless To live a life that's blameless Shake off your diamonds We're the people and who dig the coal We're the people who forge the steel The people who make the railways and drive the trains We're the people who catch the fish and build the boats We are the people that tend for the sick and bury the dead we're the people who fight in wars, though we never start them. We're the people who attend the birth of babies and give hope to the world. We don't come here as beggars with our hands out for charity. We come to demand our don't right to work, the next our right for a decent job with decent wages. We're the people who create the wealth of this nation and we march on London to demand our share of it. In order to 
celebrate 80 years of voluntary service in Carlisle, we are pleased to present our annual debate. This year, our honoured guest will discuss the response of voluntary service to social and political change. What sort of society do we live in? What is voluntary action and how can it best serve the society? Why do we need charities? There are those who claim voluntary action is neutral and not a political activity, yet voluntary action has always meant being involved in politics, the one being inseparable from the other. In 1904, the Conservative government set up a royal commission to review the poor law so that the credit for caring and compassion could not go to the opposition. There are two schools of thought. The first, that people should be self-reliant and fend for themselves. The second, the state should support the weaker and poorer members of society. If it ever was the case, it is certainly not now taken for granted that the state will provide. The government is pushing the burden more and more onto the family, where some would argue it has always fallen. So, how should charities function? Should they be campaigning, innovative watchdog type schemes, or should they let the government off the hook and leave things to the individual? hundred and ten years is a long time in the history of a city and its people. A lot has changed over those years, but one thing remains the same. The question of how we end poverty and achieve a fair and just society. We must also ask if there is a role for charities in making this happen. And if there is, charities must meet the ultimate challenge that faces them. They must work to consign themselves to history.
I'm the last chance saloon Am I falling down? Got a chance now to change To turn things around Got to turn things around I can turn things around Faith, hope, sweet charity I will turn life around Thank you.